Hi gang, Rob here. It is the evening of 27 December 2021. Coming to you on a chilly winter's evening in Northeast Indiana. Recording tonight from the bunker in Noble County, Indiana, USA. I have for you this evening a good old fashioned knife review on the Apostle P channel. This one is going to cover the new for 2021 number 86 Barlow pattern from Great Eastern Cutlery. You are looking at three examples of the 86 Barlow before the camera. Two of them are the GEC 2 Acorn Barlow. One of them is the 2021 Blade Forums knife, the Spring Street Barlow. These two in 440C stainless and this one in good old 1095. I wanted to get these knives on the screen, number one, because one of my subscribers was kind enough to send them in for review and because I think the 86 is an interesting pattern and an even more interesting Barlow, which I did not think when I heard about them. So I want to go into them in a little bit of depth tonight and compare them against some other GEC offerings because there are some key differences that might just make the difference in your pocket. So let's take a look at them individually and then we'll look at the details. This is the tube for the GEC 2 Acorn branded 86 Barlow. You might get with it a button that says number 86 GEC Rust Orange North American Cattle Bone. <clears throat> get those tubes out of the way. Get this out of the way. So let's look at the 86 Barlow. So most of you who follow Great Eastern Cutlery know that the number 86 pattern came about a few years back. What was it, 18 or 19? I can't remember. I should have looked it up. In the form of the 86 oil field jack, previously reviewed on this channel. And it was kind of a large-ish standard jack. Not so much large in overall length, but in girth. Super thick stock on the main blade, big usable pen blade, beefy clip point, and frankly, a little large, a little girthy in pocket for my liking. I much prefer the 77 and 78 standard jacks. So I kind of dumped my 86 oil field jack rather quickly because I just didn't love it. And when they announced that the Barlow was coming out, I thought, eh, another uh, solution in search of a problem. I mean, we already have the 77. Why do we need that? And it's probably going to be too fat. Well, <clears throat> let's take a look, shall we? Now, this one is in the rust orange natural bone. So the outer surface of that bone is dyed rust orange. And then when it's hafted, much like a saw cut, that inner whiter color is revealed as it's hafted. And then we've also got one in layered black and red linen micarta, which can fool the eye at certain distances and look a heck of a lot like Cocobolo. <clears throat> Bolsters on this knife, and it is a Barlow, so you've got that elongated bolster with a bunch of pens, Lots of history on the Barlow, and it's kind of, uh, its appeal has completely changed character in the last 10 or 15 years from what made Barlow's popular in the past. The Barlow is generally an inexpensive hardware store knife back in the golden age of the slip joint in the mid-20th century. They usually used less expensive materials, an extra uh, some extra length in the bolster and an extra pin giving it some 
uh, some horizontal stress rigidity. They were kind of made to be indestructible. They generally weren't super precise in their finishing and uh, they didn't cost a lot of money and you could really use them forever. And, and now here we are in the, the beginning of the 21st century and the Barlow has become sort of the bling master of the traditional slip joint pocket knife genre. And let's face it guys, none of them get used very hard, do they? <laughs> okay, so let's look at this thing closely. What we got here, and I'm going to kind of compare it to the 77. Again, because my initial impression was, why do we need this knife when we have this knife? Let's look at closed length. 3 and 11 sixteenths on the 77 and a full 3 and 7 eighths inches on the 86. It's going to be wider in this dimension, sort of top to bottom. Now one might think the handle thickness is going to be bigger on the 86, but it's actually not. They're both about 400 thousandths thick and it kind of depends on what cover material and where you measure them. The big difference in width is going to come, if, if you can see it, in the width of the back spring and the thickness of the blade stock. So they, they hide that girth well in the exterior envelope dimension because blade thickness on the 86 about 105 thousandths to around 90 on the 77. But they've wrapped it sort of in less handle, so overall thickness ends up being about the same. And then blade length on the 77, you're looking at about two and seven eighths, and then a full three and one thirty second of an inch on the 86. I got fingerprints all over that gorgeous 440C. Uh huh. And then blade profile. And you guys can see, I actually do use my knives. Look at the fine scratches in the satin on that 77 Barlow. Yeah. <clears throat> Blade shape, a lot different. Um, the 77 uses basically the same clip point as the 15 and 14 boys' knives, just a little larger, whereas these 86 clip points, I think, are more reminiscent of the 97. You've got a little broader blade, a little stubbier clip, not quite as graceful and elongated, and then very slight recurve in the blade. So you could say the 86 clip point is kind of a mini 97. <clears throat> it's a little different design. I don't think quite as attractive as that one. That's just my personal opinion. And then let's talk about walk and talk and pull weight. I feel that pull weight at seven and a half. And it's virtually identical on all three examples I have in front of the camera tonight. And it's about the same as the 77, about a seven and a half. If anything, I would say that the perceived smoothness of the action is better on the 86 Barlow's than it is on the 77's. That's, that's saying something, guys. <clears throat> and then, while the 77's have been run in both all steel construction, like this one, and they've also been done with nickel silver bolsters and brass liners. Um, now, this is an all steel knife, bolsters, liners, and backspring. The 86's, even though this is the, the two acorn Barlow in stainless steel. These bolsters are nickel silver and the liners are brass. And then I want you to take a close look at this beautifully stamped bolster. That is an oak leaf perched atop two acorns. At the base of the oak leaf pointing sideways are two acorns. And then with the GEC script below that stamped oak leaf. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. 
let's see how did we do on construction I have perfectly smooth transitions between bolsters and cover material I've got centering on this one that is dead down the middle and as I said everything is beautiful when you operate the pocket knife let's take a look at the black and red linen example again beautiful hafting smooth transitions beautiful blade centering how do we do on our symmetry pretty doggone well and again buttery smooth finishing inside the blade well is beautiful as most of you know what we GEC enthusiasts call acorn knives are stainless steel bladed mostly 440c and that's what these are and you have that GEC practical knives etch on that polished blade now Andrew my subscriber who loaned these knives in is a is a big fan of stainless GECs and he writes in his accompanying note that he finds it to perform about like 154 cm from benchmade so no slouch on the 440 c and those of us who are kind of new to the hobby we we kind of think of 440 c as old garbage stainless <laughs> but guys what you need to know is 440 c was the first super steel it vastly outperformed any stainless steel that came before it around what 1990 it sort of came to the fore um, and really approached carbon tool steels in its toughness and edge holding which was unheard of for a stainless steel back in the day <clears throat> so it's kind of special stuff and it really it, it does not suck guys especially comparatively to 1095 not a lot of difference in its performance it might not take quite as keen an edge as 1095 but you know the corrosion resistance in some climates makes it worth it and then let's look at this last knife this is the 2021 blade forums knife the spring street barlow now if i could hold that steady and you could zoom in you would see the street sign which is where you turn to go to Great Eastern Cutlery. And it's Spring Street, and I can't read the cross street because my old eyes won't do it, but feel free to study. Now, this knife is offered in sawcut hemlock bone, and it is gorgeous. It is a gorgeous reddish-brown color. And check out the bolster treatment, guys. Triple-lined and rat-tailed. So one line, then rat-tailed, then a second line. And then up at the very front of the knife, we have the third line. Again, nickel, silver on the bolster material. Brass liners. And then, oh, and you, get, you guys know I have history with blade forms. It's not great. But I got to hand it to those guys. Satin no etch. Golf course club. Good job, guys. I dig it. I really do. Nice nail neck, nice drawn swedge. Same slightly recurved, kind of bull nose, robust clip point. Same ultra smooth walk and talk. Same seven and a half pull. And centering on this one, yeah, it might be a little left, but it's pretty doggone close to perfect. Symmetry on the hafting, beautiful. And I think that bolster really sets off the knife. Let's look at the tube that comes with this one. A very detailed piece of artwork. There it is, Caldwell Street. Caldwell and Spring. I should know that because, you know, I have to turn there every year to get to the factory. I'll let you uh, 
pause and read the tube label if you so desire. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what do I think? I think I was wrong. I actually have a good friend who asked me about getting one of these when they're when they were about to be released and i said oh man i don't know why they made that 86 into a barlow it's a fat chunky thing you'll never carry it just put that one out of your mind and go on to the next one well sorry brian <laughs> i hope you got one against my advice because i think it's a pretty doggone cool knife and man that hemlock jeez blade formed guys you killed it you killed it yeah it's good to see them uh it's good to see gec you know doing kind of a flagship barlow in the stainless acorn series not just the acorn series but the two acorn series love it let's get him out of here put him in execution on these is excellent i don't know i you guys know I don't pay much attention to forum chatter, but I'm looking at three of them, and I can't really find anything I would complain about. They're just very, very well made. So if you're looking for a large barlow, maybe not as big as a Madison from Northwoods, but something that's robust but still not ridiculous, you got it here, I think. Let's see if I can button up here. Button. And button that is all for this one my friends great job bill and the gang at gec grace to you and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ remember the word is sharp i'll talk to you soon